What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on this channel. On today's episode, we have something a little bit different. We'll be looking at the retail store and how you can design a strong floor plan to encourage traffic and to help build your brand. Obviously with more and more brands going exclusively online, it seems like the retail store concept or the physical store concept is going out of style. And yes, there's undoubtedly going to be less moving forward for good reason. However, I don't think that the retail store itself is going to be extinct. On the contrary, the retail stores that do exist are going to be more popular than ever if you think about Apple, and they're going to be able to push your brand to new heights that exclusively online brands can't necessarily go. There's just something about a physical space and the way that it interacts with a brand's value and structure that is so important. So on today's episode, I'll be bringing you guys my specific look as both an architect and a fashion designer in terms of how I think building a strong floor plan can create a great retail store experience and can help you get the most out of the physical space that you're building for your brand. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. While your online store is an extremely important part of your brand and you need to consider every single detail when it comes to the virtual experience a customer is having, the same is definitely true for your physical store. You need to put yourself in your customer's shoes and when deliberating every single decision you're making regarding the composition of the space, you need to kind of understand how your customer is going to interpret that and how they're going to be interacting with your store. This is definitely a way for you to get the maximum benefit out of a store, which as we all know is going to be quite a costly investment. It's not as simple as a website where just by setting something up, millions upon millions of people potentially have access to this. When it comes to a physical store, you need to make it worth visiting because many people are living extremely busy lives and the idea of going to a physical store is no longer at the top of people's priorities. So it needs to be done in a way where it not only creates a great customer experience, but it also potentially enhances the customer experience and provides them with things that they, ne they cannot necessarily get in a virtual store. So on this episode, we'll go over 10 key characteristics that a physical retail store should have in order to address the weak points of a web store and at the same time, in order to maximize the efficiency and efficacy of the store's layout and to give your customer the best experiential retail experience. Number one, make sure to keep the customer's experience at your store interesting by dividing your store into three key zones. These are zones A, B, and C, where A is your welcoming zone. So this is a welcoming area that serves the purpose of attracting customers and creating a great first impression. If you think about this, it's typically the version or the zone that's at the front of the store closest to the glass or the entrance. If you're at a mall, the idea here is to encourage you to come in and to showcase what your brand is all about. If you look at some of the most interesting experience stores, they typically push out the most interesting things and most eye-catching things out to the forefront. This is to, to encourage people to come in and to actually give the store a shot. Zone B is going to be your wandering zone. So this is going to be more open and it's going to be filled with pathways that encourage you and direct you into the more specific zones of the store. So this is after you've passed through the threshold of your welcoming zone and this is gonna be generally a more open space that just takes you to the more direct zones. And then lastly, C. This is your finishing zone. So this is an area that essentially concludes your customer's retail experience with you and it has things like your fitting rooms, your checkout counters, mirrors typically. It has a lot of rack space that have a ton of variety of colors and sizes to make sure that your customers have easy access to all of their shopping needs right then and there. So your zones A and B are setting it up for the finishing zone and C is creating a great conclusion to that customer experience. Number two, make sure that your store has enough navigation space. 
The last thing that you want to create is a suffocating store experience that is claustrophobic and is not well ventilated. When it comes to creating your main walking paths, make sure that they're open, unobstructed, and at least 120 centimeters or four feet wide. This is to allow two people coming and going, and also make sure that all of your store's assets and products are within arm's reach. You don't want to put them on shelves or tables that are not accessible, that are not going to encourage your customers to actually interact with the goods and to give them closer inspection and hopefully to even buy them. So these are important things to make sure of. And it's also important to make sure that all of your products are shown clearly and visibly. You don't want anything to be obstructed. You don't want to have unnecessary distractions. The store's layout should be clear and functional. Number three, incorporate details that best represent your brand's image. It's important to consider the minor details of a customer's experience, whether it's your layered lighting assembly, or it's the smell of the place, or in general, it might be something like ambient music that represents your brand. It's extremely important to create an experience that customers can enjoy and feel comfortable in. If your brand is not represented well through these details, you're not going to go a long way towards convincing your customers that number one, this is a retail store that represents you, and number two, is a space that they wanna spend their time in. Number four, make sure to constantly update your store with newness. It's extremely important to avoid having a store that looks out of date, rundown, or stale. Making sure that the campaign visuals represented in your store are the latest is going to go a long way towards maintaining cohesion across your brand and making customers feel that your store is a representation of the newest version of the brand, the most up-to-date. Also, make sure that you're always refreshing your interiors and the visual merchandising displays. This is going to go a long way towards keeping your store feeling fresh and something that your customers are going to want to come back to time and time again, especially your loyal customers, the ones that spend a lot of time, actually the most time in your store. You're going to want to give them something new every time. Number five, make sure to create a singular path to your store. When creating the navigational space, make sure that it is clear, easy to follow, and is unobstructed by any unnecessary obstacles. You'll wanna make sure that your customers know where they're going at all times, and regardless of how big your space is, you don't wanna create any dead ends when a customer is naturally moving through the space. You'll wanna make sure that the store is easy to navigate, it's clear and straightforward. This is going to be done by creating some sort of peripheral move where your customer moves from the outside of the store all the way around. This is going to create the most natural movement and also consider going in the clockwise direction. This tends to be a more natural movement for people. Number six, consider using props or other visual media to attract customers. These can either be at zone A, which is the front of the store or in the middle of the store as a centerpiece. The idea with this visual media and props is one, to create some depth to your brand. Obviously the types of mannequins or props or displays, whether they're booths, tables, or any other sort of visual merchandising is going to be a way for you to create brand depth, but it could also be a way for you to smartly and intelligently display your goods. For example, there are companies that create these insane holograms where they're solely intended to showcase products in very interesting and compelling ways where not only are you visually representing the goods in an interesting way, but the artifact itself that is at the center of the store is also a visual spectacle. The goal here is to get customers to be willing to spend more time in your stores, which is going to be indicative that they may be more willing to make a purchase down the line. Number seven, make sure to strategically position the checkout counter. This is going to be vital in terms of creating an experience where your customers can feel like they are ready to be helped at all times and as a security precaution to make sure that you have someone that's overseeing all of your customers' movements at the store to ensure the safety of both your staff, your merchandise, and actually any additional customers. So this is typically either towards the back of the store, the center, usually up against a wall where a singular checkout counter can get access to all of the store visually or usually closer to the entrance where you have eyes on anyone who's coming and going in and out of the store. And at the same time, it is generally a more natural space to provide a checkout counter. As people move through the store and they complete their clockwise experience, 
they're going to end up at the entrance again where they may be ready to check out. And number eight, make sure that you structure your layout in a way that creates short and efficient pathways so that your shop assistant can have easy and swift access to all the main elements of your retail space. This is especially important when you have one shop assistant that's trying to access the fitting rooms, the storerooms, the checkout counters, and the racks. Number nine, when positioning your islands or your visual merchandising islands in the store, make sure to consider adding rails and mannequins and strategically position them around the islands to encourage customers to spend more time around the islands to check out more products and to just enhance their overall customer experience. By positioning your islands, you're taking up valuable space, but if done well and ornamented correctly with the right rails, racks, and mannequins, you can enhance your customer experience and get them to check out more likely. Number 10, make sure that your layout encourages your customers to explore the entirety of your space. There is no point in creating a beautiful retail store that uses the best materials and the best visual merchandising if you're positioned or your store is not positioning it itself in a way that encourages your customers to want to experience the entirety of the store. So make sure that you're providing visual cues towards the back of the house with clear and short pathways that can encourage free movement of your customers from the front to the back and all the way around. Well, that is a wrap guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and have a better idea on how to build a strong retail experience. Obviously, starting off as an e-commerce business, this may not be the option for you. It's quite costly, but I definitely wouldn't recommend riding off the retail store. It's definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. And the brands that do retail really well are going to continue to grow. And this is going to be a great option for you to offer something that exclusively online competitors can. Hopefully, this has given you a better overview of how you could potentially create a strong retail experience. And if you want to see more episodes like this, please let us know in the comments below. We also get a ton of questions regarding how you guys can work with us. So we are a fashion design agency where we produce and develop sportswear and streetwear. So if you guys are interested in working with us, please shoot us an email at studio at fitdesign.com. It's going to be in the screen below and we'll get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next time, stay awesome.